say welcome back to the 4-8 Men Podcast. Hey, welcome back to the 4-8 Men Podcast. <laughs> that was the best that you had so far. <laughs> welcome back. I'm joined today by my one and only father-in-law who happens to also be the funniest person that I've ever met. And he's here in person with us today. So, Willie, welcome to the podcast. Man, I can't wait to be here. Well, you are here. Oh, that's right. I can't wait to talk about what we're going to talk about. So. Well, we're going to talk all things fitness and all things... Woo! Come on, son. All Let's things, go. All things spiritual. Um, so if you don't know, Willie loves tennis. He loves golf and basketball. And not only do you love those things now, but you also were an intramural champion. And you've had, you've had, you've had quite your run of... Intramural champion of what? Badminton. Badminton. See, that was one thing I didn't mention because I was going to let you kind of share your glory days yeah. on badminton. I was really into badminton. I still love badminton. Um, but, you know, I can't find the suitable competition, so everybody else has got to get better at badminton because yeah. you can really shine if you're better than everyone else. Well, when COVID first hit, you actually built a badminton court in the backyard with the, and you, you ordered the racket mm -hmm. from some professional. Yeah, uh, it was some signature professional racket. <laughs> I don't think you ever ended up using it because it didn't come straight. Now, I, no, I, no, I got it strong. You did get it strong? Oh, yeah, I got it strong. No, yeah. I used it. Um, yeah, I told my assistant at the time to buy me the most expensive badminton racket he could find. He was like, well, which one is it? I said, it'll be it'll be sponsored by a player that you can't even pronounce. And it, and sure enough, it and was. that was the best one? It was the best one, that yeah. Was the best one? But it didn't come strong, so I had to go get the strings on it, which luckily I had somebody locally put the strings on it. And, um, yeah, it's awesome. So we ordered the real shuttlecocks the goose feather shuttlecocks yeah. and although where we were putting the cord out where we lived it if it's windy it's tough man, oh yeah it just really uh, yeah that, the day so, we tried yeah. to play it was so windy you could you could hardly hit it yeah yeah so we'll uh well we'll make another go at it yeah. i still got the net i got yeah. the we drew the lines the whole yeah. thing well you might you, you may not be the biggest fan of like physically working out but you do like to be active yeah so where does that like have you always because I know I know that you grew up and you always you know grew up playing sports and grew up grew up being active. So is that where that where that comes from? Yeah, in fact, I mean, if I if I probably took a picture of myself now and showed my younger self, my younger self would like be very disappointed on how it all turned out. But um, but hey, I did some other things in life that were cool. So, uh, but yeah, I played every. In fact, I didn't really know a lot of people that played more sports than I played. Um, young and so um but growing up we didn't really have the option like like you guys were well off and y'all played like organized baseball and mm -hmm. had the uniforms and that wasn't an option for us so we couldn't my parents were like hey look if it costs money it's out so um and they wouldn't – we live so far out there was just no way I could get a ride anywhere so I never got to play – I've never played a game of baseball in my life um and um which is kind of sad, but you know, That's we crazy. we ended up having to play things that we just made up games, and so we instead of baseball, we'd play what we call tennis ball. And so you take a tennis ball, and we took a like a broom handle, um, and we had a tree. We had a big oak tree down uh, in the kind of where the driveway is, but the river would flood a lot, and and so we drew a big um, uh, a big box on it, and that was the strike zone. So if you hit it, and I mean. We throw that thing as hard as we could, you know. Yeah. So it was it was legit. Uh, first base was a um, like a there's a certain brick that because it was all gravel road and stuff. So it was like a brick that was kind of shiny. So that was first. Second base was another oak tree, and then third base we usually had to put something out for third, and then you come around and you touch the oak tree for yeah. for home plate, and um, which was fun. I mean, we played it every day. We played. Uh, golf we took my grandma's cane and we flipped it upside down where the where the hook was on the bottom and we got one of them like just foamy balls yeah. like a big ball and then we dug the holes with with shovels or like uh sharpshooter shovels and so we, the hole was way bigger but then we would play golf we'd have par fours and par threes and uh play golf there football we played going down to the boat dock and again uh all gravel um so yeah when you rolled up it was yeah. it was tough but I, and we also burned the trash down there so it was probably not the best place to play but we would play like two on two football and um and so my brother al was usually the 
all-time quarterback, and then me and Jace were the yeah. receivers, and then he had a buddy, and we'd play a <clears> lot of football. I remember I was probably 11, and I I fell down, and there was an old Coke bottle that was broken, and it just sliced the top of my foot because we played barefooted. So yeah. It was 100% barefooted and because uh, we could run so much faster barefooted and just cut my foot wide open. I never – my old brother, like, he went, oh, it's okay. Just put some dirt on He kicked dirt into the uh, – my dad got mad on that one. He, he chewed him out for that. Um, then he had to clean it out. And yeah. Put the old butterfly on it. No stitches, uh, only butterflies growing up. But, yeah, it was wild. So we played everything. And then basketball, we had two oak trees – and dad had put this like this uh just backboard up that he made, yeah. you know, that he sanded and all that stuff. And so and it was probably about ten foot four inches or five, so it was a little higher a little than higher. normal. So you had to you had to you had to get it up there. And the problem was playing basketball like that, because I shot every day. I remember like I was I was like, I'm gonna make like I'm gonna be a yeah. professional basketball, professional basketball really, you know, I'm going to shoot and shoot and shoot. And, uh, but the problem was you couldn't go through for a layup because the tree root you'd sprain your ankle. So when I got to playing in junior high and then high school basketball, the worst thing I did was shoot layups because I never was able to go follow all the yeah. way through. So I would stop because you had to stop for the tree roots. Or else, and, you, or um, else you just nail it. So yeah, that was, uh, that was several other things that we played. Um, out in the yard and on the river that we would we had all our little fields and courts and uh see so yeah, it was kind of cool i mean it was looking back i mean it was treasure i mean yeah. those times were just you know we learned we were all super competitive and uh and pretty athletic i mean dad was a you know college football player and so uh and he never would really come out with much every once in a while like he'd pull up and we'd be playing football and he'd go hey hey give me that ball and he'd do this little thing he'd say you know go out, and he would throw that ball, and it would hit us so hard. And we could never catch it. Like, it would just bounce off of us. And we realized how good, I guess, he could throw a ball because yeah. he, he had quite the arm. Yeah. Even even with, like, the basketball story, what was the story for when, when you were – I think it was either middle school or high school, and you were you were doing the layups and your coach said something to you? Oh, yeah. That uh, Coach Stone, which was my coach in ninth grade, who actually is my – is the father of my – nephew-in-law jay stone who works here at documentary but he was my coach and he couldn't stand me i mean he did not like me at all and he called me hot dog mm -hmm. and so because he said oh hot dog can't shoot a layup without doing two twists you know and so but i was probably trying to cover up that i couldn't really make the layups so i'd try to make yeah. it look but every time i went up and um but he was the girls coach as well and so Several of his players kind of sweet on me at the time, and I think I distracted his girl players from because uh, they were they were serious about yeah. basketball. These little schools we were at, and our girls teams were always really good. And um, uh, but yeah, I ended up coaching basketball. I ended up coaching when I was in college. I ended up coaching uh, uh, back at that school back at Pinecrest where I went to school. I was the assistant coach, and so love basketball and just that was my real my real love and. Uh, I didn't get into badminton until I was working at Camp Chioka, the summer camp, and then we had this – we we just played badminton all the time. And so we had – I made these trophies. Uh, it's called the Black Birdie. And we'd paint them and put the year on it. And so we'd compete for the – we'd have a doubles competition, like a big tournament, and then we would have a singles. And uh, actually, Jason and I played together as partners mm -hmm. on the badminton. And we, we won uh, – and then the singles would go. It was, I mean, I think I won one year, but, yeah. but it was pretty competitive. Yeah. And and then I went to the went to the '96 Olympics. I went to the badminton competition, which was so funny. Yeah, I was, awesome. yeah. You know, but I did win the intramural championship yeah. uh, right here. At, it was NLU at the time. Now it's ULM, and so that was my big crowning moment. That was that. That, that was your claim to fame before you actually. Before you I was, uh, we were legends in the uh, – we played in the men's church league, uh, actually in Monroe, uh, which was a tough league. And so I have so many trophies. I don't even know where they're at, but we would yeah. we would win the win the league. So I'd play that a lot. And, um, uh, yeah, intramurals I played uh, a bunch. I finally, in my, in my fraternity, I got to where I was the athletic director <clears throat> in college because the AD could play on any team. 
Oh, cool. So you could play A League, B League, C League, and I'd go in like them D League games. And I think one game I had like 82 points. Uh, and we had like three players or four players. As a Christian, you know that God is always there for you. But sometimes it's really nice to have one on one interaction with somebody that you know that you can trust and they hear what you're saying. Online counseling from Faithful Counseling is there for you. It's a place to connect with your professional Christian counselor in a safe and private environment online. So back when I was in college and even now, obviously I still love to communicate with God, but at the same time, it is nice to get to talk to somebody who's actually in person, a friend or somebody that I can trust that hears me, that can give me advice and that listens to what I'm saying. And that's why faithful counseling is so cool. It's a place to connect with your professional Christian counselor in a safe and private online environment. And Faithful Counseling has licensed professional counselors who are experts in many areas, such as depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, trauma, and anger, and anything that you share with them is confidential. They have 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states, and they're available worldwide by text, chat, phone, and video. You can start communicating in under 24 hours from your desktop, mobile web, or their Android and iOS apps. And best of all, it's truly affordable. 48 Men Podcast listeners get 10% off your first month from our sponsor, Faithful Counseling. So why not get started today? Go to faithfulcounseling.com slash huff. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's faithfulcounseling.com slash huff to get the help you need today. And so when the competition was low and I just basically shot every time. So yeah, yeah I mean, athletics was, yeah. I mean, I started a... Volleyball, an indoor volleyball league. I started a flag football league. Now, that one about killed me because there was a fist fight. And it was all church guys. And, yeah. I mean, every night somebody went at it. And I was the commissioner, the referee when I wasn't playing. And then I had a team in the deal. So you could yeah. you can already see that people are going to be upset with me on yeah. some level because I could always make yeah. the final call. And, yeah. uh, but we had a lot of fun. But I would just start leagues up and we would, you know – We'd buy jerseys. We I'd go mark the fields. I mean, I would do the whole yeah. thing. And then we played a lot of uh, what they call modified softball, which I don't even know if it's around anymore. But it's not windmill softball. So you had to come back and you had to keep it like close to your hip, and then you threw it. But it that was a fun game. You would steal, bunt, you know. So it was just like baseball, um, and we did that. Um, yeah, I mean, up until I was probably 30 when I tore my ACL the first time. Yeah. That's when it all started. Went, yeah. Ooh. I said, I better start getting a business where I'm doing <laughs> the business. But even still, you're, you're one of the most like, because even, granted, this isn't even a sport, but like just your competitive nature, like even with Scrabble, like, you know, almost like every word in the Scrabble dictionary. If we're basketball, like before this game or before this podcast, we were making our roster for the rec league that, we, that we've been playing in. <laughs> and even last year, like, if, if 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 you were to show up and actually watch one of these games, like you, which is just it's 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 the best thing ever. But like seeing you with like the shaved leg, like <laughs> KT tape, I shaved you have, all like, my leg. <laughs> I had so much KT tape, and I blew out twice, <laughs> twice. during the, which is one of the funniest. One of the, one, yeah. of, one of the games we only had five players, and you were the fifth player, and you blew out your calf. And I just told you just to stay underneath I, the basket. I blew the out the calf for the second time, so I had. I had injured the calf early in the year, and and the first time I injured, I just went to just to move, and I went, oh no, something happened. And that night I couldn't walk, like I just hopped over the bench. And then my biggest problem, like y'all were still playing, but I was thinking, how am I going to get to the other end to my car? Yeah, because I could not push off of my foot at all. Yeah, and so remember, I like turned my yeah. foot sideways uh-huh. and shimmied out of the gym. I was at the doctor the next day. I actually got dry needled. Yeah. I don't know how many needles they had in this sucker, but he had them all in there, and they had the little electrode hooked up. So he's pulsating, trying to shock this thing. And I sat out. Was it like a week and a half or two? It was like yeah. It was, and it was I like felt pretty good. And I yeah. said, I, and I asked, I said, Doc, you think I can go? And he was like, Yeah. I mean, you can try. And then we went out with five players. Uh-huh. Same thing. I just yeah. pushed off. No, it wasn't like yeah. some crash or anything. Yeah. Now this injury, it was different than the other one. This one felt like somebody externally hit me with like a bullet or marble and in fact i looked around because i thought something hit me yeah. that was the, it was the yeah. strangest yeah, you pain. thought someone like need you or something yeah and i looked around and nobody was there and i went whatever just happened in there 
It's not good. It's not good. So I went to the bench. Remember, and so y'all played another like two minutes, then it was halftime. Yeah. I'm texting everyone like, somebody get up here. We yeah. only got four guys. And then you came yeah. over and you said, do you think you can just stand there at the end and play defense? Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I can try. Yeah. So I stood there and I played yeah. defense. Y'all would all run yeah. the other side. I would just stay there. Oof. And then everybody would come down there and play defense. Then I got bored. Uh-huh. And I said, well, maybe I could just stand on the offensive end. I went down there. You throw me the ball. I was ball. about to say, wasn't that the game that I threw the you ball? You threw me the ball. I shoot the three on one leg and make yeah. it. And I'm like, oh, my. And now this other team, how mad were they getting? Because oh, now yes. we're beating them with four and a third player. Four and a third. And we're winning. We were and I them. can't even move. I'm staying on one end of the other. And then you threw me the ball again at the end of the game, and I hit another. I hit uh-huh. two threes. Yeah. It was two for two yeah. on the blown-out calf. And then that's when I wrapped it, and I said, "All right, I'm coaching. Yeah. I'm coaching the rest of the year." We had we had five on offense, but we pretty much had four on defense. Yeah, for the rest well, I had of, to yeah. pick which side. Yeah, you had to pick which side. But on defense, I couldn't push off of it, so it was really difficult to. Yeah, remember I was just hacking them. Yeah. If you came in that little spot, yeah. you were gonna get you were gonna get yeah. hammered. You're gonna have to make sure free throws. So. How are you feeling? How are you feeling for this year? Uh, I'm feeling good. Actually, this year. Now, this will be a. This is kind of a life goal that I that I said probably when I was your age. Because I remember thinking, like, I'm going to play basketball. And I said, when I'm 50 years old, yeah. I'm still going to be playing basketball. Now, five years ago, I thought there's not a chance. But <laughs> this year, I'm going to sign up, and I will be on the court yeah. at some point, And yeah. I will be 50 will be next 50. month, and I will be out there still playing basketball when I'm 50, which is what I said when I was probably 24 yeah. years old. And uh, so, yeah, that would be which- kind of a – Bucket list. I don't. I. I don't think many fifty year can. I don't think many people that are fifty can say that, and actually, and actually, still be deep. I mean. Yeah, I mean, actually, yeah, I mean, actually, like, play. actually play. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know, age is yeah. kind of a state of mind, and I mean, my body is like obviously trying to break down, and so. Yeah. And I thought I was in decent shape going into it, but um, but even like because we were playing out at yeah. camp a lot, we were practicing a lot, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stretch out and know. But it was so weird. I I would just literally like. I would go to push off, and yeah. uh, but I've had kind of calf issues, and yeah. Achilles issues, because yeah. I blew my knee out. So I've had two ACLs. Um, the main, well, it all started when I was like almost three years old, and I climbed up a slide the wrong way, and I, I don't, I don't really remember the incident. I get somewhere to the top, fall off, hit a tree root, and I shatter both bones in my mm-hmm. leg. From the knee up to the hip. And so I'm in a full like body cast at three. You imagine <laughs> imagine honey being in a body cast? No. And so, yeah, it was disgusting. So I hear there's like one hole in the back cut out and something in the front for me to go to the bathroom. My parents, I mean, we were so poor. Who knows? I don't even know how I survived or lived. Uh, Dad bought me one of them little creepers that you go under cars with. And so the, the story was I would just be, uh-huh. you know, I'd be going out like that, like paddling myself. But I think during those formative years of my bones, something happened to my left leg, and it just wasn't. Who knows how it all? Yeah. You know, and I'm getting treated like in, who, you know, the yeah. doctors, probably a doctor yeah. slash, you know, insurance salesman. And so they put a, a pin in my leg. This is probably 1975, and to, to put it together, and I guess it fused back. But then when I was in ninth grade, I was playing – Football and I done went through all the two days. Every you know we're ready the first game of the year and I'm the deep guy because uh, I was pretty fast and I catch the opening kickoff first game of the year and I take off and I hit a guy with my shoulder and when I did I extended that left leg and some guy hits me right on the side and I just went oh no so I hobbled off the field and Co- Coach Stone Coach same Stone. dude hot dog. <laughs> Get in there. Are you ready? I was playing quarterback. <laughs> yes. You know, I can't remember. I think he caught a like a like a 32 dive, like a like yeah. No, or like a quarterback sneak. And I took one step and I mean I had nothing. I just cratered out. I said, Coach, I'm out. <laughs> like I can't walk. Yeah. Doctor next day. I'm in a cast the next day. This cast was like from the thigh to the ankle. And I had cracked my kneecap and tore. Wasn't ACL, but I tore something else in there. So then I start. I just went to basketball. The yeah. doctor said, "Look, man, I don't think you're a football guy. Like your joints are loose, and this is probably gonna keep happening." And which I kind of regretted because I I love playing football. Yeah. So I just went to shooting, shooting, shooting. Um, and then 
that was in ninth grade. Back then, ninth grade wasn't high school. So mm-hmm. then we transferred to the high school, to Westmore High School. Yeah. So I went out for the team. I made the team, and the coaches were like, Robertson, you're a good shooter. They were like, but what's up with this form? And it, when I would shoot, my left leg would go straight because I shot so much with a cast with on. With the cast on? And he goes, you're not getting the full potential because you're basically shooting off your right leg. Yeah. And so this right leg for my whole life was just stronger. Yeah. So I would, you know, uh, you know what I really see is when I snow ski, I can turn to the right, I can't turn to the left. I want to talk to y'all today about Groove Life. And Groove Life is one of my favorite brands. And I use their Zeus ring, I use their Groove Belt, and I also use their AirPod case. And the awesome thing about Groove Life is they actually have the only breathable silicone ring. And the grooves in the ring let air in and moisture out. So it's comfortable whenever you are wearing it. So I ended up doing the Murph Challenge earlier today, and it's a one mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, and another mile. It is not for the faint of heart, it is something that is super difficult, but I say that to say, I was wearing my ring, and when I was doing the pull-ups, my I could hardly feel like I had it on. You know, when I, if I were to wear my metal ring, it would be super clumpy and my fingers would hurt, but when I wear this, I can't even feel like I have it on. Even though I'm sweating, it doesn't get super slippery. And not only do they have rings, but they also have belts. And I've been wearing the Groove Life belt, and it is the most comfortable belt that I've ever worn. I wear it to super nice events. I also wear it to church. I really just wear it anytime I need to wear a belt now because it's just that awesome. This is a belt that you never have to adjust. You just fit once and forget. It's great for everyday carry, and it's perfect for the office, the woods, the backyard, and everything in between. And what's also so cool about this belt is that it has the world's baddest buckle. It snaps using high strength magnets for any snap on, snap off, and has what they call stiff tech, which means no folding in your belt loops. And that's not even the coolest part. The coolest part is that Groove Life has a 94 year warranty on every product they sell. So whether you cut it, stretch it, lose it, break it, no problem, Groove Life will replace it. Groove Life has some awesome deals right now. All you have to do is go to groovelife.com slash huff. Head to groovelife.com slash huff today to get your new ring or your new belt. And then at 28, I blew the first ACL out playing flag football. Made one cut, just, you know, nobody hit me. I just made a move. I wasn't sure what happened. So I went over the side. I was like, golly, my knee. So I went back in. I ran the same play. I went and did a cut. And this time it just felt like it bent in two. And then I said, I'll just rehab it myself. And so I got where I felt like I was good. Went to play basketball a couple months later. Came down on it, and it felt my knee went like introverted, and it swole up this big. Yeah. And uh, so the dude drained it, and he said, "If it's blood, it's ACL. If it's clear, it's MCL." And, and sure enough, it was blood. And he said, "Well, when you want to have surgery?" And I'm like, "Oh no!" And it was ACL. Yeah. He said, "Do you want a donor graft, or do you want to use your patella tendon?" And he said, "I asked him a question that he'd never been asked before." I said, which one's cheaper? <laughs> so I took the donor graph, and I don't that thing didn't last a year. Like I knew something was off and went to another surgeon. He jiggled my leg and he was like, Yeah, when do you want to have surgery? I mean, he didn't even x-ray it. He yeah. said, You don't have an ACL. And then the second surgery, he found the old one. It was all balled up in there. And by then I'm like 30 years old, 31. I'm like, man, I can't do all this rehab. I got to go. So as soon as I could walk. I walked. My leg stayed this big. I mean, it was so small yeah. for like years. It's still not as big or strong. And uh, but that was the injuries. And then the, then the weight comes on because then you can't do as much. Your knee mm-hmm. hurts, and so uh, and then you just get bigger. And so I see the I kind of see what happens. You know, when you get when you get injured and when you can't go, it's just a it's a real bummer, especially with your legs. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah. I was still committed. I said I'm gonna. You know, we play tennis a lot, and so that one. That one doesn't seem to bother me as much, and then, uh, but basketball, yeah, maybe I'll just kind of yeah. get out there and yeah. try to dial it down a couple yeah. of notches, shoot some threes, shoot some threes, just post up. But when I was so when I, but when I was telling uh, Corey that you were gonna be on the podcast, she was saying that I had to ask you about the Body for Life fitness competition yeah. <laughs> that you did. Way yes, back in the day. yeah. Well, you know, I kind I always love a challenge, and so and even challenging myself, I'm like, ooh, this will be a good challenge. And so I'd done the ACL, I'd gained some weight, and then, you know, and I'm looking at myself like, oh, look how fat I am. I, I would love to be back where I thought I was fat. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. That's my after picture now, which was the before then. 
So there was this thing called Body for Life. This is probably late 90s, maybe. Um, and you could like, you took a picture of yourself for like 30 days and uh, and you had to take it beside a newspaper uh-huh. so you would know the day. And so you turned it, it submitted and you could win like yeah. cash or win some prize or whatever. And, um, and so I took this picture of... Um, of myself, my shirt off, and I'm like sticking my stomach out as far as I could, you know. And then I was doing the challenge and did it all the way back. And uh, uh, yeah, I participated in that. Well, then I thought, um, did she mention the the hair removal? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was, yeah. So then I thought, well, to ha- to have this look, you know, uh, I think I I've got way too much body hair, so it made yeah. me look sleek sleeker, you know, if I was uh, a little more Clean cleaned shape. up, and so. I saw this product. I, I think I'm right on the name of this product, but I think it was called NADS. And it was like you put it like glue on you like this, and then you pulled it off. Uh-huh. And I think it was from like Australia. And so I put I put this on you, and I'm on reading the directions. I'm like, and when I went to yank it, nothing. <laughs> it just held on. And then I do it again, and then finally I just rip it off, and it's like bloody. I mean, oh my god! Well, now I'm like I can't keep doing this. So, yeah. I, but I've got one yeah. like giant patch of no hair. <laughs> so I think then I just shaved the rest. Of it. Why didn't you just shave it from the get go? It seemed that they sold me. I yeah. watched the thing. I'm like, this is the yeah. way to go. I was like, on TV. They're yeah. just like rip, rip, rip. You know? Nah. It was basically like think about a, the thickest version of honey. That you could put on yourself, yeah. and they were supposed to hard, and you're supposed to warm it. I don't know. It didn't yeah. work. So. Yeah. Well, Corey said that you didn't you like write a complaint to them or something. Yeah, I wrote yeah, a complaint. You. I said it was the most painful experience I've ever had. In my life. <laughs> oh, I was I was trying to get the, like the twenty bucks back. You know, at the time that was a big deal. So I was like, please send me my money. But I never heard back from them. So. So did you win the competition? No, and I didn't yeah. even. I never got anything. I never yeah. got anything in the mail. I didn't get yeah. any free like vitamins or yeah. something. I bought all the crap that I was yeah. supposed to buy. So. Well, she well she was saying too that this was. I guess this was closer to the end of the story. But you after after you had done that, she had come up here, and she didn't have, she didn't have any film in the camera. Oh, that's right. And you you had just gotten your you were doing. Push-ups. Oh, I was do- I was all pumped up. You were all so pumped yeah, up. and I was so I forgot. That's why I, it's yeah. good to be because your wife can remember so many more things that you forget. Yeah, so she comes up and I'm like, "You ready?" So I said, "Well, hang on, let me." So I'm yeah. like, <laughs> "I'm like," push. and I'm like, "All right, I'm at my full swollen moment," <laughs> and I'm like, "You ready to take the picture?" And she had no film, and I was furious. I was like, "I mean, you realize yes. how long it takes me to get my muscles all perked up, right?" <laughs> Yeah, she was laughing so hard thinking about that story. But even just like, even just, that just sounds, the wax is just not the way to go. No, I mean, it It was really, I mean, when I wrote the complaint, it was a disservice to what they were trying to, because something went horribly wrong. I mean, it was, there was yeah. no way. Yeah. You were, I mean, it was so painful. It was, it was horrible. Yeah. I don't see that company around anymore. Yeah. So. Well, I've never tried that one, so I hope, I hope don't. I don't, I hope I don't ever <laughs> go through that one. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like, you know, wanting to maybe transition into kind of some more spiritual stuff. So I feel like for me, um, I feel like we're similar in the sense of like our, like we travel a good bit. So it's kind of difficult to like keep up with like the same like routine, so to speak, you know, what are ways that you like consistently, you know, cultivate your relationship with Jesus when you have such a busy and like sporadic schedule like you Well, do. I think it's uh, so much of it is similar. Like it's, you know, I mean, it's similar to, you know, your body, but it's also similar to, you know, your spirituality as well. You can, you kind of, sometimes you kind of feel yourself going, oh man, I'm, you know, yeah. kind of in a funk here. I need to, yeah. and it will, you'll get super distracted. And I think spiritually it's the same way. You get distracted I don't even think you realize you're distracted, but you're just so distracted by just life. I mean, stuff that goes on, nothing really, I mean, I'm not talking about major sin, which can be a problem as well, but I'm talking about just like life and work. And um, and you can look down, you can, you can almost look at yourself physically and you can say, wow, I'm out of shape. Or you try to do something, um, like we played tennis. Uh, oh, that, one, that was Bella and Jacob. And I mean, I run a couple times, like, I mean, I was like, I'm going to throw up, you know? Uh-huh. And I think spiritually that happens as well. We just kind of get out. There's been times I'll show up uh, maybe to a, to the building, you know, and I'm standing there worse, but I can just tell, man, my mind's like, 
mm-hmm. way off, you know, and I'm just not there. And there were other times when I show up and I'm just like, I cannot wait for this, you know, and so I can't wait for this whole uh, experience or whatever. And so I think it, there's there's so much similarity to that. And one, you can see physically and one, you can feel spiritually um, just from the distraction. So I think, you know, the routines are, um, you know, I almost put them in the same category. One is you, you don't stop mm-hmm. and you don't give up. And so... Uh, when I got that basketball thing and I'm like, and I'm not in my good shape whatsoever, but I'm like, all right, I'm fixing I got to get here to get here to get here. And then we're going to do this and it's going to be awesome. And so, I, so, but if you ever give up, you know, oh, I can't, I can't do any of that because I'm to this or my knees hurt or blah, blah. It's, it's just, you're never, you're going to stay in that, you yeah. know, that same place. And I think spiritually is the same way. I think, uh, sometimes we just kind of give up and like, well, I guess I'm, you know, that's yeah. not my gift or I'm not this, or I'm just going to kind of show up and, and see if I can meander through life. And I think there's so much more uh, to be gained. And, and the other thing I think spiritually is you can root yourself in the, in the word, which, and if I thought about that physically, you know, at the end of the day, if you want to lose weight, you got to, burn more calories than you take in. It's pretty simple, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you're taking in too many calories and you're not burning them, you're, you know, yeah, yeah. you're going to be upside down. And I think spiritually would be the same way. And I look at the word of God like that, where if I take that in and if I keep taking that in and reading um, and I'm praying and I'm, I'm being intentional about it, uh, it's, it's amazing because you can almost see the drastic effect spiritually yeah. just about how you think and how you, you know, um, where Paul says, think about these such things, you know, and that's, so that's on your mind. And when you're thinking spiritually, um, I think evangelism is another one. That one keeps Mm -hmm. me, uh, it just keeps me close because evangelism, when you're, when you're sharing Jesus with others, keeps you in the word because you need to know that. Because when I'm talking to someone, I don't want to sound like an idiot. Like, I don't know what it says, you know? And uh, I mean, that's basically the, you know, that's the chubby guy giving everybody advice on what they need to do to lose weight, you know. And it's like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, you're not the guy to be giving that advice. But it's amazing. There's a, There's been a dude in my life for my whole life that's been like the guy, oh, I'll tell you how to do it, you know. And I don't want to be that way when I'm talking to someone about spiritual things where I don't know because I never read the Bible, so I don't know what it is either. And then everybody's just kind of coming up with opinions. And so I want to be rooted in the words where I know that, uh, to where I can share that with people. So it keeps me studying Yeah. because sometimes people will ask me a question that I have no idea. And I'm like, never thought about that. And so I yeah. got to go study that out and look at it. And um, it keeps you sharp too. Cause when you're talking with others, you're not focused on your own problems. You're focused on them. And um, which can be, and that can be so similar to, to like, you know, training or whatever too. Like you can train, like you could probably see someone going, oh, you could be doing this better, more efficient. Yeah. And I do that with golf. Like I can, whether or not my game is like, my game is not intact right now. So I've got to get it back that way. I played yesterday and uh, it was a train wreck, but I know what to do, Yeah. but I can watch somebody and go, oh man, I can, I can fix you in two things. I can have that fixed, you yeah. know? And so I can watch, well, it's similar to me when you're studying the Bible or you're hearing someone's problems or whatever, and you, you're like, oh man, I've been there before, so I can help you with this. And so, and all the things spiritual are the things that, that ultimately really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I think physically too, you know, it, it is like, man, I need to, you know, I want to be able to be, yeah, to be active and to be able to, yeah. still, I mean, we, we're still playing. I mean, I'm so thankful that I can go out with, with you guys and, you know, who are super athletic and at least compete and have fun, you know, yeah. not just be like, Cause I just see guys who just give up and they're like, eh, I yeah, give up. <laughs> I'm yeah. just going to eat Twinkies and, yeah. you know, <laughs> the heck with it. You yeah. know, let's just, you know, and yeah. so I just, ultimately I don't want to be that person. And, and, and I think spiritually, like you can't just look at the past going, well, look at where I've gotten myself and spiritually the same way. You know, yeah. There's that time where you're going, Hey, you know what? Like, like Peter, when he denies knowing who Jesus is and then he gets up and acts one and starts trying to figure out who's going to replace Judas. And then Acts 2, he gets up and starts preaching. If you turn your Bible two pages backwards, Peter did not even know he knows him. Yeah. And so he could have lived there and he could have just said, well, hey, that's where I'm at and it's going to yeah. take me 10 years to ever, or he just wouldn't say anything. Like I blew it, you know? Yeah. 
But man, when I read that, I'm like, wow, he got back up there. And I think so so many times we we hold ourselves back because we're like, oh, I'm, I'm so screwed up. And we can't get over the past whenever Jesus has paid for that and he's done that. And you can't change it. Like You can't go back and, you know, you can be sorry for it and you can be sorrowful about it, but you can't change it. But man, what you can do in the future, yeah. the sky's the limit. And so, yeah, yeah and I, I always feel like that even physically the same way who knows you know i could be whatever it is i'm not you know yeah a slave to anything or what you know to yeah to eating a certain amount of food or like oh i gotta have my you know my fried stuff or whatever no i mean there's times you know fasting that's another thing that can yeah. kind of reset your body re and but more so reset yourself spiritually yeah you know to be in tune with god and so and that's one to where that's a physical such an interesting example. It's a physical thing tied to the bigger thing, which is spiritual. Yeah. So it's actually both. Yeah. Because it's actually that denial of your body. And it's amazing how quickly your body just mm -hmm. revolts and going, hang on. I don't care whether you're bigger, small, or whatever. When that food stops going in, man, your body's just like, Arr! you know, and then your body will say, okay, is this the way it's going to be? <laughs> are we yeah. going to, that we're going to shift some gears yeah. here. And so I love that though how it ties both those together that that spiritual and that physical yeah. in the same yeah. in the same kind of in the same kind of yeah. deal. Well after being like super close to you I know that your biggest you know I guess like what what you're most passionate about and, and where your heart goes is to evangelism. Why do you think we've lost that sense of being evangelistic in in today's day and age? Um well I you know in some ways, it's not talked about uh, yeah. like it was in the past. I think, um, you know, you you end up, I think, being distracted by even religious things. And so it's like, oh, we need to uh, connect or have more community or create groups for people so they can have fun together and also walk this Christian life. And so the focus becomes more inward. Yeah. Uh, maybe in a church setting, it becomes more inward and less mm -hmm. outward and less, you know... Um, I think sometimes we get trapped in thinking, hey, I'm in, I got it. And this is a tough one. Like, I got what I need. Yeah. I feel good about it. I got me and my family. And so let's try to make it to heaven. But that's such an inward focus thing. You got it. Well, that's great. Well, somebody shared it with someone, either you directly or your parents or you were taught, but you can go back and find out where that is. And for me, why that's so important is because, you know, my dad and mom had this radical story where they come to, Jesus, you know, in their late twenties, and they're they're not living a good life, and now it's like this radical change. And I was able to see that, and it, it saved our family. We we would have been split up, and my whole life would look completely different, yeah. I mean, completely different. And because um, you wouldn't have had a duck call business, you wouldn't have had, you know, I probably wouldn't mm -hmm. have been here in this town and met my wife, and who had your wife, and <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. So when I look at it like that, I saw that impact, but one of the more important things is once that, now dad could have come in and said, all right, I'm in, so let's try to go to church, you know. Yeah. If that's the standard, is trying yeah. to go to church, then um, that's a pretty low standard, but he was passionate about sharing that with others because of where he had seen yeah. it brought him out of. So he knew the power of it, because he was like, if I could leave this, then anyone can. And so I watched him for years passionately do that. And so then, but even as a youngster, when I was talking about playing all the sports, I had this passion too, to tell others about Jesus and uh, really bonded with our family over that. And so that was always the most important thing was, you know, who'd you share with, how to go to what questions, you know, cause I go to dad and say, yeah. they asked me this and this, you know, I don't have a clue. Yeah. So we'd get in there and study. There was no cell phones or anything. We were looking stuff up in dictionaries and, you know, like yeah. old Bible stuff. And so, but I had this passion for uh, just watching people when they, when they saw it, when that gospel hit them and they were like, that's it, you know. And then yeah. you watch that life change. It's very similar to seeing a, uh, you know, a guy who weighs 250 pounds go to 150 pounds, you know. Yeah. It's so drastic. It's like, whoa, like, yeah. Yeah, you can physically see it, yeah. and you just see this confidence, and you see them like they feel better, and they just got this whole new lease in life. And how much more is it when you see someone whose life is just a train wreck, and there's so much um, damage and just, you know, all this stuff, sin has just wrecked their life, and then to come out of that and just live a completely transformed life. It's yeah. the same kind of thing. When I see it, it's like, ah, I'm happy for 
this purse. I'm like, ah, because I can tell there's a lady at the grocery store who I see. She had she had asked because I had lost some weight and she was asking me uh, how. And so I mentioned some things. And so and then I just saw her and she was like, Willie, really, I've lost 50 pounds. And I was like, look That's at awesome. you. And you could just she's just beaming, like yeah. just beaming from like, you know, look at what's happened. And so. So I love that, that transformation and that challenge um, anyway. And so uh, to me, I think it's a direct, you know, uh, command and like a reminder constantly, like it's not just about us. we got to go share that. So, I mean, some of those are, I think, why we maybe not. We just don't think about it. Uh, some of the ones that are easy that people say is, I don't know the Bible well enough. Yeah. And so that it's just a cop mm-hmm. out of saying, I just don't know the Bible and yeah, and so my question is, well, okay, I mean, maybe you feel that way, but then, so what are we going to do? You know, mm-hmm. what are we going to do to to improve that? And um, and so and there's and so we go, we went through these little system where we got yeah. little things where we try to put the Bible in there, and, and in a lot of ways it's similar to being physically active. The same way, it's like, hey, I need to get in there and learn that. And uh, and so we've trained. You know, it's fine. We do it with our Bibles, and we we try to memorize it. and We take the Bible away, and so if I'm yeah. talking to someone just like that. Um, a lot of people think they're just too far gone. They're too damaged. They don't have, they don't know what to tell anyone. Uh, mm-hmm. Fear, I think is a big overriding thing for people. They're scared. Yeah. To, I think we're, we're, we've taught, there's kind of this unwritten rule where we're not supposed to talk about religious things to other people. And so it's like, oh, you believe what you believe and I believe what I believe. And so I think that's a, a real tool of the enemy I mean, I can just imagine the devil himself going, they've actually convinced themselves to don't mention what the most important thing in their life is. And yeah. Don't talk about it, you know? Yeah. And um, and so I think those are some of the the things that we try to break down. I go, no, 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 we can learn. I can teach you seven or eight just passages that you could share with someone that could get that started. I think questions are a big one. Uh, what questions we ask. And oftentimes, I've always said this, and you've heard that, I just listen. Yeah. So when I hear somebody mention something that I can jump in there spiritually on. I'm like, that's it. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. Um, man, I'm so fearful of this, or this has happened in my family, or, man, I'm, you know, this world's going downhill. You know, so, oh, those are little ways that I can, oh, okay, well, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about this world. Let's talk about the next world. Let's talk about what happens when you die. Let's talk about, you know. Mm. And so you can... You know, and all throughout the New Testament, I love those stories, especially in the book of Acts, uh, which is my favorite. And so um, kind of like when Philip runs into the Ethiopian, he's reading his Bible. He just left worship from Jerusalem. So it looks like he's a godly guy to me. Yeah. He just yeah. left worship. So that's for us, leaving church. And now you're reading your Bible on the on the highway and you'd be like, wow, the guy's fired up. Yeah. But Philip asked him a question. Do you understand what you're reading? Yeah. And the guy says, how can I unless someone explains it to me? And right there, then it said he shares the good news of Jesus with him. And um, and he ends up getting baptized. And so so those questions, when I read those stories in the New Testament, I go, that's to key me to go, keep asking those questions. Even if it looks like everything's right. And so just think about what questions would I ask. And, um, and oftentimes I say, it says, you know, because people are like, I'm just so nervous. I'm not good at asking questions. Then just change the scenario. And if I told you, hey, are you married? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long? Who? When? How'd y'all meet? You know, yeah. these are questions we would, nobody would feel uncomfortable about asking anyone. And so then just put it in the same way and think about that relationship with the Lord. I was driving with a guy yesterday. <laughs> he was he was running me somewhere. I didn't know him. And, and we just kind of got a ride. And uh, I said, hey, are you a believer? He was like, what? <laughs> you believe in Jesus? Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, tell me about it. When did that start? You know? And uh, and he actually had a Bible. It was like from 1998, but it was still in the box, which I thought, hmm. I said, well, it doesn't look like you've been in this very much. <laughs> but we talked about it, and I, and I opened this, I opened up 1 Corinthians 15, and I read him that, and I said, the brothers, by Paul's writing, and he says, I want to remind you of the gospel which you received and which you've taken your stand. So Paul is reminding that church 2,000 years ago in Corinth. And so I was reminding this guy yeah. of what he did in 1998. That's just cool. a reminder. And I was like, that's yeah. it. That's all I got with him. I may not ever see him again for the rest of my life. But, you know, I was with him for 15 minutes in a truck. And he happened to have a Bible in yeah. a box yeah. in his truck, which was amazing. Yeah. So I just read him that passage. And then 
you know, Paul also says, uh, you know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it has the power of salvation. And so I know that if I can just get it out, let's let that gospel work on him. And so and who knows, that guy may be like, yeah. man, we were on this truck, you know, yeah. let, let that gospel get in there and do what it does, you know. Yeah. It's not on me to like convince him or try to, you know, oversell it. I'm like, that's what happens to me. And then hopefully our lives are testimonies as well, where someone sees you go, man, I, you seem like you're, you know, you have joy or you have love, or you have peace or you have patience. These are all fruits of the spirit that are coming out of us. Well, when people see that, it could be attractive to them going, because yeah. I'm not seeing that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm bitter and I'm angry and I'm mad and I'm, you know, and I'm throwing fits of rage or whatever it is. And so uh, that can be a testimony as well to someone to say, well, hey, I can tell you, I can tell you what I believe and I can tell you what yeah. I do. Yeah. And, um, and sometimes it's rejected, you know, just like physical stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, somebody may look at you going, how do I look like this? And you're like, well, you really want to know? Yeah. And I remember I had this lady come up to me. I'd lost weight. And she says, how did you lose this weight? And I looked at her, and I don't mean anything ugly by this, but I just said, I don't really think you want to know. Because she was hoping I was going to say, yeah. I bought this bottle, bottle of pills, yeah. and I take two a day and eat yeah. whatever you want to eat. That's what she wanted to hear. But when I was going to tell her what it took, I knew she was going to be like, discouraged. Yeah, I'm not doing that, you know. And yeah. um, and I'm fascinated by that, and I, I love talking about that with people because I watch like what is exactly going to hold you back? Because she was seeing something like I want that, but I knew it was such a just a passing moment. Like, do you really want to? Yeah, you know? and I think that's what Jesus was telling, really, the people who were considering following him, like in Luke 14, where he's saying. Do you really want to do this? Like, like it's, yeah. it's not easy. It's not, and and sometimes I feel like with physically, it's the same way. Do you really want to? You know, you really want to do this? And and sometimes I think it's a simple step. Um, I got this guy that was kind of heavy, and I was out walking or something. He's like, "How'd you lose that weight?" I said, uh. "I said, well, why don't you try this? Why don't you try just walking a mile every day and just go to the end of the road and back." And he's like, oh, no, I just joined a health club. And I said, well, have you been? And he's like, well, not yet. But I'm, I'm like, but you feel better about yourself because you joined the health, joined club, the health right? club, right? So you join, so you're like, yeah. oh, I'm on my way. Yeah. But every day, every day you could be out walking that mile. And yeah. it may just spark something going, okay, I get it. And uh, I saw him months later. He was yeah. <laughs> same size, even bigger. Yeah. Did you ever walk that mile? Yeah. No, I never got out there. You still in the health club? Yep. Have you still yeah. been? Uh, I try to get by there, but you know, you see that, like, yeah, if you're definitely. not willing to make that just small thing, then how are you going to, you know, I think sometimes we're like, oh, and I think even in, in Christianity, we're like, oh, I want to be, you know, you may see somebody going, I want to be that, but yeah. then you're not willing to put in, you know, uh, like I talk about legacy. If you want to have that legacy that lives on, which legacies are passed down, legacies are where to laugh, where, you know, we'll tell stories about uh, I think it's so tied in legacy with legwork, which is just like a yeah. bunch of legwork, like yeah, to cool. do these things if you want, you know, and I can put that now, I can leave that realm, I can go into business Yeah. same way because um, I run into people, uh, a lot of people nowadays, and they want it so fast, you know, they're like, well, you, you know, look what y'all did, you know, I had some guys say, what's it like being an overnight success with Duck Dynasty? And I'm like, well, we started a Duck Commander in 1972, so I don't know what your idea of overnight is. is. Yeah, yeah, it's 2013. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it seemed like a long time of just yeah. legwork, you know, legwork, yeah. putting in, being there at the right time, being content, being patient. And then when opportunities come up, and then you can go take them. So, I mean, that principle goes yeah. across the board, you know, with what – what that takes. And so I see a lot of that, those similarities all around. Yeah. Well, real quick, I want to ask you this question before we do our, our challenges, because I feel like a lot of people, you know, you can think about when you think about evangelism, like what is one person actually going to do? You know, if I, if I could tell one person about my faith, like the domino effect that that could potentially have, and I think mm -hmm. Phil's such a unique story of that. So you kind of, can you kind of share like Yeah, what? it is. Yeah. This is my, one of my favorite uh, ways to look at it. So you've got a couple that were living in, Southern Arkansas, super poor. Uh, Phil had kind of, you know, he'd played college football, and Bradshaw, he happened to be there at the same time. And so, you know, people, Bradshaw ended up being the number one pick. And, you know, so it was like, wow, this, where did he come from? He was like, Louisiana Tech. Who was, you know, and he was actually backing up Phil when he first came in there. 
And so then Phil moves on with life. He's out of college. He's, you know, in trouble. He's committing adultery, living in sin. He's just like out yeah. of control, crazy person. And um, and so, but he had this sister who was passionate for the Lord. And so the sister begs this guy from this town to drive up there. And it's like an hour and something drive. And he was at the bar, like he was at a bar that yeah. he was running. And so I was thinking about this pastor, like what if he does, you know. So if yeah. someone asked me like, hey, yeah. Willie, will you drive up to Monticello, Arkansas and go to this bar, there's a guy there. You know, would I do that? Yeah. Would I be like, I ain't going to a bar talking yeah. to some dude. And because uh, now we'd think like, well, tell him to come to church, you know. Yeah. But that dude wasn't going wasn't into no church. church, no. And this guy actually did it, went up there. And so I'm just, I think about him and like, wow, if that wouldn't have happened, I mean, life literally would have been different. So he goes in there and he preaches the gospel to Phil. Phil doesn't even immediately respond. And I'd love to know what he, and he's passed on since, but I'd love to know what that guy on the way home was like, well, did, yeah. did it work or did, you know, like I, I missed, uh, you know, I struck out on that one. But Phil ends up eventually, once he planted that seed, he came back to that. And he was mm-hmm. like, all right, now I really need, I want to hear more about this Jesus. So he gives his life to to the Lord. We see this as little kids. We see this drastic change in dad. You know, we're all kind of scared of him, you know, and rightly so. And then now we see this guy who's just like preaching. Like he just, he would just sit there and read the Bible. Like he was just consumed with it, just like. Mm-hmm. And then he started teaching it. Like we went to a small church. He would teach every Sunday Bible class and we just go through books of the Bible and uh, consume with that. And and then, so that really impacted our lives. And if it would only have it affected us. So let's just say the gospel comes in, the marriage stays together, the kids end up growing up with two parents and everybody's way happier. So be it. That's great. You know? yeah. But now you think about this greater. So we get married and so we're all believers. We have children, they're believers. And then the show Doug Dynasty happens. And then we have a show that's in like over 100 countries with hundreds of millions of viewers all over the world. Mm-hmm. And everyone is ending with a prayer. Yeah. Now I can track that back to where now you're immediately uh, directly affecting people, hundreds of millions of people. I can go back to that one couple who decided to stay together. Yeah. Then we have kids, you and Sadie are together. So uh, how many followers do you guys have? Mm-hmm. How much are you guys preaching and teaching and all over the world? Again, you can track it back. Track you it see back. how that can go. So if you would have went back to this couple, this crazy guy with a barn, like you'd have thought, mm-hmm. I mean, what kind of impact? And I think we limit ourselves. We're like, I mean, what, could, what good can I do? I'm in Podunk, Mississippi or Ohio or Wisconsin. You know, I can't really have yeah. this great impact. You have no idea yeah. what God may use you to so we don't, you don't know, man. So you just put this message out and, yeah. and it's just fun watching, you know, from people who are maybe really struggling or at a low point in their life to people who are yeah. wildly famous or wealthy or whatever it is. And so the gospel just, man, and I love just watching it just obliterate yeah. uh, people's lives and they just go, yeah. whoa, that's what I need. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I know I gave you a little late notice on the physical and a spiritual challenge, but um, have you thought of anything throughout this episode that, that you can maybe have us do? Uh, spiritual challenge. Uh, I would just say um, try to memorize some some text or verses um, and go through the New Testament and look at um, whenever direct life change happened with people. And mm-hmm. so uh, not as much like letters written to people, like here's what you should do or, not, or try to avoid this or whatever. Look at where the direct life change. Like I mentioned, Philip in the Ethiopian, which is Acts, what was that eight, seven, yeah, in there. eight, yeah. Um, so you have that. You have the uh, the jailer who remember they were in prison and the the walls went open and they didn't leave and they ended up sharing the gospel mm-hmm. with him and he and his whole family uh, got baptized at that hour of the night. Uh, Acts two is great, you know, to me because you know if you look at uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels, the long versions from Jesus' birth to to resurrection. And then Acts 1, Jesus leaves and he says, wait for the Spirit. The Spirit shows up and Peter gets up and preaches. It's the first time I can see that the gospel in its totality, yeah. which is death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, is actually taught like to, yeah. a, to this big crowd. And um, and so that's done. And then we have 3,000 people. So now we have this giant, you know, right off the bat, all these people. Then the church forms. But just look for those areas. Uh, uh, look for Saul. You know, when Saul... 
is converted. He's blinded, and three days later, and then he's 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 filled with the he's baptized. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, and then three verses later, it says he began to preach Jesus is the Son of God. So that's how long that's how long you can turn your life around. So much so to where they were still nervous that he may kill them uh, when he showed up. Yeah, and so but that was this drastic life change. So look at those because that may be something when you know that story and you can tell that story. It may be the story you can tell someone that you're hanging out with going, ah, oh, you're exactly like this guy. Yeah. Maybe you're like the eunuch. Maybe you're like the Ethiopian. Maybe they're going to church and they're trying to read the Bible. They don't have a clue what they're doing. You yeah. know, they're showing up thinking, I mean, how many times do we hear somebody go, I need to get back in church. I'm like, no, you don't need to get back in church. You need yeah. to... You, perhaps you need to obey the gospel. You yeah. know, perhaps you need to put Jesus actually, on. Or actually learn what it is. Yeah. That's the number one you yeah. know, thing in your life. It's not just, but it's like, I think people show up thinking it's the same way with the gym. Yeah. It's a guy going, I need to get back That's in the gym. gym. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah, you can be at the gym, but I mean, you've probably seen a couple of heavyweights in there. Yeah. They're at the gym. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. But you're looking at them going, eh, yeah. something ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of walk around yeah. and drinking coffee yeah. and yeah. chitty chatting with someone. So, uh, and then the uh, the physical challenge, um, yeah, I don't know. Just try to, uh, you know, maybe do something that you're um, – yeah, mine are super simplistic. You are like doing all these things that have t- names. No, 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 no. See, this is good because some of the – Mine is just like, doing something yeah. different. You know, maybe I can do something different that I hadn't – you know, maybe that i thinking, there's no way I could do that. And just seeing if I could figure out how to do that physically or, or whatever that is. And um, Like set a new goal for something. Yeah, I think yeah. just start a goal. You know, I, yeah. th- When I said walk the mile, that was what I did. I remember just saying, I'm going to walk a mile every day. I don't know where it's going to go. And and that mile turned into two, and it turned into getting Fitbits and, yeah. you know, and then really be intentional, getting stronger, you know, whatever that is. And so, um, you know, you can't take it all on. You know, if you, you're not going to be um, – you can't just do it all overnight. Uh, yeah. What they say, uh, you can, you can stay in shape a lot easier than getting in shape. And uh-huh. so, and there's something to that, you know. Yeah. So there's something those nuggets that I remember. About. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I think just you know, challenge yourself and say, I'm gonna do this, even if it's yeah. so small, you know, whatever, or giving up some kind of food or, or doing a fasting. I mean, I think that's a, yeah, that's awesome just to start. I, I love, <laughs> I love this idea of fasting. There's a guy here. That I said, uh, you know, let's do this fast for three days. And I mean, he calls me the first night. It, you would have thought like something happened to one of his kids. Yeah. He's panicked. He can't figure out what to do because he's at the high school basketball game and he doesn't, like, he's so tempted to eat the, the nachos. The nachos. You know, think about the junk that's, that you're Hot eating. Dogs. But this guy was like, well, how can I do it? I don't know what to do. And I'm like, really? are you that yeah. weak? Like, you yeah. can't go to one thing, you know? And so uh, uh, so I love that, too. And I think yeah. it's in there for a reason, man. All these stuff in the New Testament, man, I think, I mean, it's old messages and old words, but I think there's there was so much to what they were, you know, was fasting or baptism. There's all these things that are in yeah. there. And I think sometimes we're like, yeah, that's old school, you know, we don't do that. But yeah. Uh, it would be so vital and helpful, you know. And I think even physically, it's 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 helpful, you know, to to kind of reset some things. And I get so tied in, yeah, because you'll get totally, you'll get distracted by food. You know, it's like oh, you know, because like we talked about when you're traveling and all that, and that's where it's really hard, you know. Yeah, you're like, ah, I just grab something quick, you know. And so yeah, those are my challenges. There we go. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope that. You feel encouraged, challenged, and hope that you also laughed a lot because this was a super (laughs) funny episode. So, Willie, thanks for joining me. Hey, we got to go practice basketball. And tennis. And tennis. And badminton. And badminton.